Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode and today we're going to take a look at this extraordinary lens. This is the TT Artisan 90mm f1.25. This is a full frame lens for full frame mirrorless cameras and it comes in Sony E mount, Leica M and L mount, Nikon Z mount, Canon R F, uh, Fuji GFX and Hasselblad 1D mount. So a wide range of mounts covered. I didn't buy this lens. It was sent to me by TT Artisan. But of course I will give you an honest and straightforward review. With its long focal length and very wide aperture, this lens is a true blur monster. It makes more and nicer blur than pretty much any other lens I've used. So it's ideal for dreamy portraits with incredibly shallow depth of field. And I found it wonderful for street portraits and for general photography too. There are very few lenses that I can compare this one to. It's an extraordinary piece of glass that really has very few peers. Vintage options include the mighty Helios 40, 85mm f1.5. This is said to be a clone of the Zeissonar design from the 1930s, and it's still available new, actually. But this is a much older design that's very soft, wide open, so we're not really comparing like with like there. The Leica Summilux M 90mm f1.5 is a modern option, although at well over 10 times the price of this one, it's probably not an option for most of us, certainly not for me, and there's no Sony E-mount option either. In some senses, this is an inheritor of the vintage lens tradition, at least in terms of functionality and construction, in that it's an all-metal, all-manual lens, but that's where the similarity ends, because performance and image quality are very different. But before we get to that, let's have a closer look at this lens. So there is our TT Artisan's 90mm f1.25 and just look at that beautiful big front element. That is such a fantastic piece of glass. It's probably easier if I take it off the camera actually. This is a very, very nicely made lens. The standard of engineering is extremely high. All the tolerances are very tight and finely machined. There's no play anywhere. There's no slop anywhere. Everything feels very, very nice indeed. The aperture ring moves with a very beautiful fluidity and smoothness. It's damped as well and it feels really nice. It moves in half stops except between f1.25 and f1.4 which is a, a single stop and the aperture values are f1.25 to f16 and I don't know if you can see it there but the ring is machined for grip so that's machined directly into the metal but it is a, a very effective grip. The markings are similar to Leica style markings and I'm glad to say that they're all engraved so they definitely won't wear away like painted ones might. It's very very fine engraving too. You can hardly feel it and it covers all the markings, the depth of field scale, the aperture scale, the focus ring, even the bezel ring has engraved markings on it there. In fact, the only thing that isn't engraved is the lens cap, but I think we can give it a pass for that. It's got this beautiful big focus ring right, pretty much right in the centre of the lens, exactly where your hand's going to fall on it. And it too is machined for grip. It's got this uh, machined metal so you can hold it 
uh, effectively and the minimum focus distance of this lens is one meter all in all this is a very beautifully made lens it really is made to the highest standards i absolutely cannot fault it for quality of manufacture so there really has been a very pleasing attention to detail here oh and by the way let me mention the lens cap arrangement we've already seen this big disc of a lens cap well now you can use that in two ways you can screw that on the front there like that and use it like that or you can just turn this whole can off there if you'd rather do that if you do decide to use the lens cap as a screw on and off affair then you can use this remaining collar part as a hood for when the lighting conditions get just that little bit too brisk and shiny and light so it's a beautifully made high quality lens but how does it shoot well really nicely actually it's got a rare combination of three factors that is a long focal length a wide maximum aperture a very wide maximum aperture and sharpness because this lens is very sharp from wide open this lens is sharp pretty much from wide open and you can use it like that all day long in fact that's how i've been using it i've not really bothered to stop it down apart from um testing it and seeing what it actually performs like when you stop it down a bit other than that oh that's bright sunshine today other than that i haven't really bothered because I haven't really needed to it's entirely sharp enough and that is a real achievement to make a lens this long and this wide that performs with this quality and gives you this sharpness of image that's a real achievement so those three factors of reach very wide aperture and real pin sharpness make this an ideal portrait lens it's just made for the job it makes absolutely beautiful dreamy portrait images they have very shallow depth of field with very soft very beautiful blur and the softness of that blur is counterpointed by the pin sharpness of the image depth of field is so shallow that you can focus on your subject's eyes almost to the exclusion of everything else and this lens also gives compression which is something that only a long fast lens can do it kind of makes the background and the foreground seem closer together and it really is a unique aesthetic fully open it gives a dreamy image a delicate and a painterly image it's an image that takes you far closer to the essence and the nature of your subject than other lenses do so that if for example you're making a portrait some essence of the personality of your subject seems to come through the frame this lens is an artist's tool rather than a simple recorder of reality so this is a very beautiful lens that makes very beautiful portraits but to see what else it can do to see how versatile it is let's go back to our guy on the street i found one of its main uses is street portraits i do love to make street portraits and they're always better if they're candid this lens can give you the reach to make some absolutely astounding street portraits with separation at any distance as well as being a wonderful lens for portraits this is also a great lens for general photography i've been walking around and just snapping away really at anything whoops uh, anything that takes my interest and I've found it really good for general photography. Again, that sharpness and that blur combined to give us a unique image. You just wouldn't get this from a 50 
millimeter lens or indeed a longer lens with a slow aperture it's that combination of long focal length plus very wide aperture that gives this absolutely unique aesthetic now one of the things this lens is really good at is making blur it's got that massive aperture and even if you do stop down a bit this thing is still going to give you loads and loads of blur wide open it has enough to separate the subject from the background at pretty much any distance and I think that is one of the standout features of this lens. As far as quality of blur goes, how the blur behaves itself, how it presents itself in the image, whether it's pleasant to look at or not, I couldn't really unsettle this lens. I found that blur quality was always nice, no matter what, and I couldn't really provoke it into giving me any harsh results most lenses do have some harsh spots somewhere throughout the range of focal length and distance combinations but this one appears to have escaped that and i can't find any harsh spots the blur is well behaved it's beautiful it's soft it's tactile it's just lovely right throughout the range so if you like soft blur and if you want soft blur this lens is not going to disappoint fully open bokeh balls are circular in the center helped by this lens as 10 aperture blades stopping down a bit you can see the outline of those blades but personally I rather like that effect. I think it gives a bit of sparkle to a shot. I love what this lens does with colour. I do like colours that are saturated and this lens will provide them. Colours are very rich, very deep, very strong, very full. I think that comes from the lens's inherently strong contrast or at least partly and that's hel uh, that helps it to make very strong black and white images too but colors are very rich and resonant colors really come together with the other two elements in this lens the sharpness and the very large amount of blur on offer to create images that really could have come from very few lenses this one really is out there on its own when it comes to the kind of images it can make. I've really enjoyed shooting this lens and I've no hesitation in recommending it. It gives a unique look that can't be made with anything other than a long, very fast lens. It's sharp from wide open, it's got very strong colour and contrast, blur is very soft right throughout the distance range and Few lenses I can think of can make images like the ones this one makes. As for price, well, a mirrorless version is around about £500 or around £700 for a Leica M mount version, but that includes a built in rangefinder cam at the back of the lens here, which of course the mirrorless versions don't need. Its most obvious competitor, at least in terms of specification, is the Leica Summilux 90mm f1.5, but at around £10,000 that lens is about 15 times the price of this one. And looking at the performance of this lens, it's very unlikely to be 15 times better. So that's it from me. For now, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you would like to support it and help it to grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. And you can do that for as little as one dollar per month. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.